In this video, we're going to demonstrate how to do a four vessel cerebral angiogram versus a transradial approach. Uh, we'll skip through the transradial axis. You can see radial artery cross section. Uh, we use the standard radial artery access kit with a, a radial artery cocktail to prevent vasospasm. Uh, to get access. This, in this case, this is the right wrist that we're actually uh, approaching through. And you can see the needle um, with blood return inside the radial artery. Uh, then you put on a micropuncture wire and then you size up AC to take the skinny sheath. In this case, we see six French sheaths placed inside the radial artery. Uh, we're going to skip forward to the point where we've in a, advanced a glide wire uh, up into the anominate and over at a DAV catheter we've shot and uh, overlaid this road map um, this is going to be used to guide us you can see both the vertebral artery and the carotid artery here we can see that the DAV catheter is going to be retracted using this to guide it and we can use it to engage the carotid artery by rotating the catheter <coughs> And here you can see it's engaged the origin wire has been inserted up the uh, common. Um, and you can see it's backing out just here a little bit, get a little bit more wire, shorten up the catheter a little bit, and the catheter will actually go up into the uh, common carotid artery. So catheter goes up in the common carotid artery. Here's the lateral view now. Um, and we're going to shoot AP and lateral views of the carotid. This patient had some fibromuscular dysplasia. And once we got in position, we're going to do digital subtraction angiogram, <clears throat> which you will see. We're trying to position it just short of the carotid bifurcation. Uh, first of all, we're going to do the headshots. This is the transcranial Doppler probes, which we're actually looking at. Uh, these were on because we were considering whether or not intervention needed to be done at the same time. And here you can see FMD and distal uh, carotid artery, and you can see the uh, MCA branches uh, filling. And then we change the AP view, and you can see the middle cerebral and the uh, anterior cerebral uh, vessels. So now you've got to catheterize the uh, right vert, and here you can see the uh, catheter has been pulled back down. We can see where the vertebral artery uh, is coming off, same DAV catheter, slowly retracting and rotating. It engages, advance the catheter. Um, and advance the wire, it allows us to seat the catheter a little bit better. And then same thing, we're going to do AP um, and Towns view and, and lateral uh, of the intracerebral circulation. So here you can see the termination of the vertebral, the basal artery reflux occurring uh, down the contralateral uh, vertebral artery. So that's still the AP view, obviously you've got to get a lateral view. You look at the PCA. Following it through into the sinus views. And that's the tones of you. And next we're going to look at the lateral. And here's the lateral of the right vertebral artery. So now it's time to reposition this catheter. So you pull the catheter back, advance the wire. In this case, it looked like it went down the ascending, which is where it usually, of course, ends up for the nominate. <coughs> Uh, you're going to deflect the wire back off the aortic valve, typically. And then we're going to use the SIM2 catheter. So you can, the wire has been deflected back off the valve, SIM2 catheter has been introduced. And just the same as if you're coming from the groin, you're going to rotate and pull back and try and engage the uh, superiotic trunks. In this case, the left common carotid uh, and the left subclavian artery is really what we're going to be looking for. So combination of rotation, and it looks like we're already in the left, we're, uh, I'm sure already the left subclavian. And now you can see the left vertebral artery filling nicely 
left subclavian. There's the lateral, still injecting kind of non-selectively into the uh, uh, into the vertebral and the subclavian aorta at the same time. And now the attention is going to turn to the carotid. You can see we've pushed in and rotated. Now again, you're rotating, pulling back, and you're looking for this to engage in the uh, left common carotid artery. This really is not being edited much. It was very straightforward. So now we're looking at the left carotid. So once again, you got to do, typically the way I do it is AP neck, AP head, lateral head, lateral neck. It's just easier. You can move the gantry backwards and forwards at the same time. You see some fibromuscular displays in the carotid there. There were no significant uh, stenosis. We actually really did not intervene in this patient. the uh, lateral headshot with the middle cerebral coming towards us, the ACA going across the Fox. And really, once we've completed this, then it's really just a matter of pulling the catheter out and you handle the radial artery in exactly the same way as we, we always handle radial artery access. Here you can see the um, uh, pressure cuff has been inflated. You inflate it fully, then you pull the sheath out, nice little touch is put in um, a little four by four underneath it, so it's not all bloody. And then what you do is you back off the syringe. There's a one way valve in that you break it. And then what you're gonna do is back it down until you see a flash of blood. Then now put another two or three cc's of air back into it. So you back it down, you'll see the blood flash. And let three, four cc's back in, um, stabilize the cuff, and then looks nice. Uh, so that's a very straightforward day of doing a four-vessel cerebral angiogram via a right transradial approach. Thank you.